rise and fall of the Hotel Quinty. In 1842, William Dafoe purchased a piece of land with the dream of building a first-class hotel catering to the middle-class travelers and wealthy patrons alike. His dream was realized in 1847 when the Dafoe House opened its doors at the corner of Pinnacle and Bridge Street in downtown Belleville. It was a grand and impressive three-story building. Sadly, in 1855, the hotel burnt down during a devastating fire. Mr. Dafo rebuilt a smaller version of the Dafo House at the same location in 1857, and the new hotel proudly stood in all its regal glory until 1886, when it again burned to the ground and was eventually demolished. In 1887, William Dafo sold the property to an affluent local businessman named Henry Corby, and the land sat vacant for approximately seven years. In 1895, the doors were thrown open to welcome the stream of dignitaries and visitors waiting to view the magnificent Hotel Quinty. The building was three stories high with a foundation constructed of point and quarry stone and an impressive square tower that rose 40 feet above the roof to provide an unparalleled view of Belleville. Our house will be a pleasant place for those of our citizens wishing to secure elegant apartments combined with excellent cuisine. The guest list read like a who's who of Belleville Society. Bavarian China and Price's 1849 Rogers flatware graces Chantelle linen tables. An immense dining room offered chandeliers with gas and electricity. 14 foot high paneled ceilings and mahogany could comfortably seat 200 guests and a horse drawn omnibus was provided for traveling guests to view this splendid scene. On New Year's Eve of 1906, a magnificent New Year's Eve party was held for the guests to ring out the old year and welcome 1907. Ladies and gentlemen dressed in their ball gowns and tuxedos were treated to fine cigars, pale ale, a sumptuous elegant dinner, and a talented string quartet playing in the immense dining room. Late evening appetizers were served at midnight in the billiard parlors on the basement level. It was an evening for the history books, but will be remembered for what happened next, because early the next morning, this magnificent hotel suffered a disastrous fire and burned down. The new Quinty Hotel literally rose like a phoenix out of the ashes. Four stories of opulent elegance and charm on February 27, 1908. The opening was preceded by a grand banquet supplied by Mr. Corby, catered by the hotel staff. The words Hotel Quinny were set in mosaic tiles in the rotunda and marble pillars and floors were special features throughout the life of the second Hotel Quinty. The beautiful new hotel boasted of having one of the finest hostelries in the continent. No detail was overlooked. From the spacious covered rooftop to the large Doric pillars supporting the conservatory and the perfectly appointed guest rooms furnished by London Furniture. The club room accommodated up to 200 guests and could be divided by panels to increase or decrease meeting space. The landing was made of black quarry tile. The walls were off-white vinyl fabric and the handrail was gunmetal steel with teak inset. The green door was a preferred lounge and held up to 80 people. The bar top was built in natural laminated maple strips with doweled out elbow rests and a steel footrail. In 1920, the Rotary Club of Belleville held their very first luncheon meeting at the Quinney Hotel. Ernie's Corral was the last men's room in downtown Belleville and was located in the back basement of the hotel. It was a favorite watering hole in the 1970s for watching football and hockey games, socializing and drinking an eight ounce glass of beer for 25 cents. The Green Door was another 70s and 80s spot that usually had a band on the weekends and Singapore slings for a dollar. There was roast beef on a French stick special that included a salad for 95 cents. At its peak, the busy hotel often had four bars running. The Tropicana room was geared for a younger crowd that loved the trop with its high energy strobe lighting and trendy disc jock music. Lavish Christmas and New Year's Eve buffets for $10 per couple were a big hit. The Starlight 2000 Club brought a whole new generation of younger people every weekend to mix and mingle to a new musical experience. The Fiesta Room transitioned to a steakhouse with local chefs such as Bob Pape, Chris Bannon, and Johnny Baliotis, along with his signature dish called Shrimp Johnny. The Angus Beef House and many other businesses called the Quinney Hotel home. At some point in history, the dining room was known as the Pinnacle Room. Pat Murphy, along with Jerry Maloney, under the management of John Murphy, took over the hotel. The theme fantasy suites were a popular destination spot for a honeymoon in the late 1990s, and the hair salon, barbershop, and shoe shine stand were always busy. 
In the mid-1970s, two partners, Joe McDougall and Gord Stewart, along with their wives, Claire and Maggie, bought the Quinney Hotel, renovated it, and opened Gatsby's Bar, which quickly became a favorite meeting place for the downtown crowd. Local business people gathered after 4 p.m. around the big horseshoe-shaped bar to have a drink, share some stories, and listen to the music. There was often entertainment on the weekends. There is a treasure trove of stories and memories of this long-ago landmark stored forever in our hearts and minds. It meant something different and unique to us as it has once again been returned to a dusty vacant lot. Four buildings, four dreams, but full of anticipation and promise of a new future.